to talk to you. I said, fine. So he walked out with his stick and we walked out of his house and took a turn and started walking along a village path. And he told me some stuff. It really told me a lot of good things to hear. When we came back, about half an hour later, after talking, he sat, very tired, and I knelt. And I said, Daddy, I want a blessing. He said, what do you mean? I said, just put your head on me and say something. Just say something good. Oh, come on. I said, please. So he said some good things. And I'm here because I had him. I don't want his money. I want his blessing. I do not want his money. In, as a matter of fact, I would rather give him money if he needed some. But there's something that is not purchasable or buyable or achievable with finance. It is a blessing that that man of God or woman of God can pass on to you. Can somebody shout hallelujah? Okay. Now, this man knows he's going. His name is Elijah. And he tells his student, who is called Elisha, is Second Kings. Second Kings. And it's chapter 2. And it came to pass when the Lord was about to take up Elijah. Second Kings chapter 2 verse 1. Came to pass when the Lord was about to take up Elijah into heaven by whirlwind that Elijah went with Elisha from Gilgal. This day, Elijah will go to heaven. This day, he wants this man, his student, his prophet, the prophet in his place, to receive something. So they move, and I want you to see the four steps, the four cities, the four places that they went to before they, he received this blessing. They started in a place called Gilgal. I want you to try that word out because it's very important. Do you know what Gilgal means? If you don't, I'm going to let you know. Because I believe God is going to bring you to a place where you can start moving towards your blessing. Gilga means a place of circles. Can you imagine a place of circles? It means round and roundabout. It means going the full circle and coming back where you started. And I believe that many of you, God is going to take you the same route where he started with you when you are the best that there could be. He's bringing you full circle to where you stopped laughing and started crying. God is going to take you through that and bring you, everybody said, full circle. Gilgal means round and roundabout. Oh, oh. Gilgal means full circle. In other words, you walked away from your blessing. But God is going to make you take that sweep back to where your blessing was originally. It's going to come. If it is not the first step, then there are no other steps. They started out in Gilgal. This man is about to go, and this man, this other one is about to take over. And they went to a place called Gilgal. And the man of God says to him, if you want to stay, you can stay here. What? Oh, yes, you can. Listen, people. God has allowed you to stray and walk away. God has accepted that you be away from your blessing. But I believe God is bringing you again to the original place where you were the champion in the village. To a place where you walked gallantly. You walked with your head up. You 
the village. God is bringing you to that in the name of Jesus because of Gilgal. You've gone round in circles and circles and circles. Some of you have even started noting, you know, the month of July for me is the worst month. Every July, something happens to me. Every August, something happens to me. Every December, some, God is saying, stop talking like that because the next time you come back to that month, it will be full circle and it will be a blessing. Gilgal, round and round. There's got to be a stoppage for that that keeps taking you away from your blessing. God is bringing you to a place where you'll be steady. Can somebody shout hallelujah? Full circle. Full circle. He says to him, the Bible says it came to pass that the Lord was about to take Elijah into heaven by a whirlwind that Elijah went with Elisha from Gilgal. It's the starting point. God finds a place where you will start well. Once you kick that, then he says, let's go from here. Uh -huh. You know, there's going to be a stoppage to your shame. You didn't hear me, did you? There's going to be a stoppage to your rejection. There's going to be an end to your pain. One day, you will wake up in the morning and not need to go to hospital. <laughs> One day, you will wake up in the morning and need not go to a police station to report. And it's going to happen very soon. Very soon. Because you see, God is going to take you through quick steps until he gets you into your blessing. The first one is taking away your shame. The, the step of Gilgal, which is circles and circles, allows you to move from where you are overshadowed by others. Elisha, for many years, served Elijah, and he was overshadowed by Elijah. You couldn't talk about Elisha in the presence of Elijah. Just like people overshadow us, people overshadow each other, knowingly or unknowingly, deliberately or unintentionally. People do. How do you talk about Joshua in the presence of Moses? How do you talk about Peter in the presence of Jesus? But you know, a time is coming for you when you will be the one on whom the spotlight is. I now declare your season in the spotlight. A season is coming, the prophet of God said to me, and I can also now say to you, your season has come. For you to be in the spotlight. For you to be the one that is celebrated. No, you are going to be celebrated. Not tolerated. You've lived a life where you are only tolerated. People have to live with you anyway. What can they do anyway? Not anymore. Now, instead of tolerance... There is going to be celebration. Well, somebody shout hallelujah. Your pain is coming to an end. I speak to you that a season has come when your pain should cease. The, the disregard, the competition, the talk, the loose talk. I would rather call it garbage talk. People just talking. It's not even nonsense. Nonsense is, is tolerable. Some of them speak rubbish against you. And you tolerate it. Now time has come. You will be in the spotlight. 
Oh, I wish somebody could say hallelujah. There's going to be a change in the waves of how you do work. There's going to be a change in the waves of how you walk. Things are about to change. Light has come. Darkness is walking away. Would you shout hallelujah? Would you tell your neighbor, I am about to walk in a newness and a freshness of life. You will see yourself blossom and wonder what happened all those years. You see, when God says to the, to the body of Christ, to the children of Israel, Israel, he says, I will bring back to you the years that were eaten. God knows there were years that were eaten, years that were destroyed, and he knows what destroyed your time and your years. He says, the cake worm, the insect, the caterpillar, the worm, those creepy things, things that crept on you, crept into your business, crept into your ministry, crept into your life, and started eating on you from inside out. Now God says, there's going to be a stoppage. And I'll tell the worm to stop it. Oh, people, please, in the name of Jesus. I don't know whether I'm used to a service that is so, so, so quiet. But you know what? God is going to take you to a new season. A season where you do not cry. A season where you laugh. A season where you celebrate. I declare parties in the name of Jesus. Parties. People will be tired of you throwing parties. He threw a party last week. Then he threw another one last two, last two weeks. What is he doing throwing parties? And to you, it will be... Oh, I'm looking for the right word. I'm looking for... The, it's like recompense. It's like payback season. It's like you are doing it because you missed it. You will dress better because you missed it. You will live better because you missed it. It's like a payback situation. You, you are saying, I missed out on eating rice. Now they can give me a whole heel and it won't matter. Can somebody shout hallelujah? The things you wished you could do and couldn't God is bringing the season back so that you can now do them. It's going to happen. The years that were eaten, the things that were destroyed by worms, canker worm, caterpillar worm, locust worm, any worms, job worms, marriage worms, what are the ones? Those ones, all of them. They won't be part of your future. Yes, they were part of your history. Yes, they were part of your past life. But they are not going to be part of the future. They are not allowed in the future. They are not allowed in your place of future. They are not allowed where you are going. They were allowed where you started. But they won't be allowed where you are going. Will somebody stand up and say, I am going into my destiny. Those things will not come into your destiny. Sit down. Let's get something else here. Then the Bible says, Elijah said to Elisha, stay here. Please, for the Lord has sent me on to Bethel. Aha. Stay here. He admonishes him. And this man says, no way, I'm not staying, I'm going with you. This is not just a stay place. This will just be the beginning. You don't need to stay there. Because God has brought back, has restituted. Whoa, that's a big one. Has paid back for what you lost. Does not mean you're going to stay there. He says, I'm going on to another city called Bethel. Bethel are two words actually. Gilgal means round and round, circles and circles. This one means, Beth means house, El means God. God is taking you to the house of God. His house. God is bringing you to a place 
where you will belong into the house of God, where you will serve and be recognized, where you will be not only a servant but also a dweller. David said, Oh, I wish, even if they made me a doorkeeper in the house of God, all I want is to be the doorkeeper. Clever man. He wants to be the one in charge of the door so that when it is time to lock, he locks himself inside. Very clever man, David. Very, very clever. He says, I don't mind even if they don't give me a seat, they don't give me a plot. All I want is to be the doorkeeper. When I have the power to, to, to lock the door, can you imagine how much power the doorkeeper has? He has the key to the whole palace. He knows every spot in the palace. He would as well live in the best place in the palace because he has the key. What he was asking for was to have the key. Allow people in and when it is 